today on the Jessica Rector Show. Why do you think it's important for kids to play sports today? Sports allowed me to be more responsible or develop character. Only 0.2% actually play pro ball. So what do you tell kids if they actually see that in their future? Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Am I supposed to just see him in the ball through this? Yeah, well you, I mean, it's what just if natural. it misses and hits me in the face? We have a little surprise for some audience members out there. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Just Corrector Show. I'm Just Corrector. Soccer, softball, golf, basketball, tennis, and of course, football. There's a sport for every season, and many of us grow up playing sports. Some play in college, and even fewer play pro. What is it about sports that drives us to play or to even watch it? What's the significance of sports in a kid's life? And by playing, what can they learn that will cross into other aspects of their lives? Well, according to Wikipedia, only about 0.2% of college football players actually play pro ball. My guests had the fortune to play in the NFL for several years. Once they finished, they wanted to set out to make a difference, and they're doing just that with the art of football. Please welcome my guests, former Cowboys Kelvin Garman and Morris Anderson, and former Redskin Darius Thompson. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks for joining us today. So, Kelvin, tell us why do you think it's important for kids to play sports today? Uh, sports, uh, it develops a sense of uh, responsibility for uh, a team. Um, uh, being in high school and going through college, um, sports allowed me to be more responsible or develop character. Uh, a lot of kids these days who aren't into the sports and do different activities, they tend to get caught up in the internet because they don't have no sense of what's going on in the world. So um, being out on the football field allows you to build that um, character and responsibility for a team. Darius, tell us, what do you say to a child who may want to play a sport, football for instance, but he wants to play quarterback or receiver, but he's not the fastest on the team? Do you deter him and try and look into another position, or what do you say to him? Um, I think uh, it depends on the ages, but a lot of times, you know, when, when kids are young, you never know what, you know, what you will grow into. So I think it's, uh, it's good at an early age to develop the, develop the kids uh, to be able to play really all types of positions, you know, and just to have them comfortable playing football. And once the body start to develop a little bit more, then they can, you know, realize it and grow into the position that they would like to play. And to add, not just football, um, all sports. Uh, it's good to be kind of well-rounded. Um, all of us, you know, me being a big guy, still when I was growing up, I played soccer. Some people laugh at that, but <laughs> I played soccer, <laughs> basketball, baseball. I didn't play football until I got to high school. And why is that? Um, well, my mom, for one, she was a typical mom. I don't want my baby to get hurt. <laughs> so I ended up waiting, but um, as I got older, she realized I could handle, handle it, so I transferred over to football. What did she actually say the first time you got hurt? Well, funny, I think I got hurt one of the first games I started playing football. <laughs> Not to prove it right <laughs> exactly. or anything, right? Exactly. <laughs> She's like, see, I told you, but, you know, that builds character, too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Morris, what do you learn playing a sport that can actually transfer into other aspects of your lives? Well, um, you learn a lot. I guess you learn how to be responsible. You learn how to, to I guess, <laughs> I guess apply what you actually go through because sports pretty much is, is like life, I say. So I guess you, you it's, it's a lot different to guys that actually play sports than mm -hmm. when you talk to guys that are people that just went to school and don't really understand how we, how we actually work. But it's just like the real world. Tell us world. how you work. I mean, I, mean I, got, I got a lot of passion. I got a lot of heart. I got a lot of desire. I got a lot of go get it type of attitude. So I apply that in my everyday life as well. You know, we heard at the beginning of the show that only 0.2% actually play pro ball. So what do you tell kids if they actually see that in their future, that that's what they want to do? They have to play pro ball. Well, 
you know, stats and statistics. I mean, I don't get caught up in that. When I was growing up, you know, I wanted to play football, but that wasn't the number one thing. You know, when I tell kids today, it's good to, to dream high, um, set your goals high, um, no matter if it's sports or if it's for you to be an engineer or whatever you want to be in life. I think the numbers are always against you. So that doesn't mean you not pursue it. You just got to have more dedication to it. And if it happens, it happens. If not, always have a plan B. More with our guests when we will turn. We'll be right back. <laughs> Giving, helping, and nurturing. This is truly the art of football. After their professional football careers ended, owner Kelvin Garment and his partners Morris Anderson and Darius Thompson wanted to give back. And what better way than helping kids in their football careers? Scholarships and money are donated to allow kids the opportunity to attend football clinic camps. Art of Football programs teach life skills and how to handle real-world situations. You can donate for scholarships, education, and community renovations. Go to www.artoffootballinc.com. Kelvin, so tell us, what were you thinking after your pro career ended? Um, after my pro career ended, I was kind of stuck in a in a bind. I didn't know whether to pr keep pursuing football because it was based on an injury um, or let's start something new. So it happened right around the time of Katrina and uh, the hurricanes in New Orleans. Um, we uh, had a partner and we went up there and we started a company, a demolition company, and we helped rebuild some of uh, New Orleans. Some of the bigger hotels, we uh, went in and took everything out and put new stuff in so they could get up going quicker. Mm -hmm. So now everyone from outside can have somewhere to stay so they can start the rebuilding process. But during that, I didn't really have a passion for that. Uh, a lot of things we do, you know, you do for money. Right. And it was fun helping other people, but as something I would do for the rest of my life, that wasn't it. So um, sitting down, I kind of know that I wanted to help kids and I wanted to help other offensive linemen be able to reach their dreams, and that's why I started Art of Football. So. Tell us a little bit more about the nonprofit side of Art of Football. Well, tell us a little bit first about what you do with the Art of Football. Uh, Art of Football itself is a company that's based on uh, NFL players, uh, of course, have been through high school, college, and the NFL. Uh, all of our players or employees have played uh, three, three years in the NFL. And what we're trying to do is give back to, when I was growing up, um, there wasn't no training for offensive linemen. We just kind of got by with talent or being an athlete, and you get through college kind of with that too because no one actually taught us the technique. Well, I always thought that was unfair, especially today if you guys see camps and different things, it's mostly skill position. So I created um, Art of Football so we could actually go in as players and actually give one-on-one -on -one help to kids and teach them what the technique that it takes to actually be successful in football, not just running through drills and different things. And what made you get into the nonprofit side? Well, the nonprofit allows us to help more people. Um, it allows us to do other projects, um, such as our um, adopt a school next year. This, this fall, we're adopting a school and we're going to remake a school in South Dallas. Uh, we're going to go in and look at their field, their locker rooms. A lot of those schools over there are, they don't have the funds to. Um, they have like four shower heads for 60, 60 guys, that's not good. And so what you get is players who don't have pride in their school and they throw stuff around because the school isn't right. up, you know, there's no way for them to, to know what's good. So those projects allow, our, our nonprofit allows us to do projects like that to help out the community. Next we'll tell you how your child can get involved and be trained by NFL players. Stay tuned. <laughs> Defense lineman, wide receiver, offensive tackle. With 106 million viewers watching the 2010 Super Bowl, football proves to be the most popular sport in the U.S. Kids wonder when they'll be old enough to play on their own team. Art of Football's clinic camps are designed to work on the player's skills and techniques in a semi-private session, while their development training is personalized time working on improving the weaknesses of the players. Since camps and training are taught by NFL players, it helps ease the minds of parents everywhere. Just ask the parents of their current clients. Cowboys Flozo Adams 
and Raven star, The Blind Side's Michael Orr. Welcome back to the Jessica Rector Show. If you're just tuning in, we're talking with former NFL players who started the art of football. Owner Kelvin Garman and partners Morris Anderson and Darius Thompson, who can actually attend clinic camps. Um, really, kids from ages 7 through um, 18 high school ages, they can attend the camp. What goes on at the camps? What do they learn? We don't want to just stick them through a bunch of drills and uh, routines like typical camps where they don't really learn a skill. You know, we want them to come away uh, from our, our clinics with at least learning, you know, something that, that they can they can take with them, that, a skill that will help them be a better okay, player. Okay, so give us ex an example of a skill that they would learn. Let's say uh, for receiver, uh, something they will learn would be, you know, first thing is uh, starting out with proper stance and, you know, stance and coming off the ball, you know, catching the ball properly, uh, running routes correctly, um, you know, all that thing. And, and we get deeper into it, you know, we try to help the guys uh, to start learning reading defenses, you know, all of that type of thing. Give us an example of just when you're playing sports, things that kids can take. I mean, Morris mentioned responsibility, but what are some other things? Well, my number one thing is discipline. Um, once you're disciplined, to be successful, especially at my position, you have to be very disciplined in what you do. Um, the word art and the word art, of, the word art and the slogan art of football means the technique and skill. So you have to be disciplined in what you do so you can um, improve on being a better uh, football player. As far as me, you know, I work on footwork and I work on, we're real intense. We're the upfront guys who like to get nasty. So it's not a lot of <laughs> prettiness about what we do. But we, once you learn that you have to work hard and be disciplined in what you do, then it kind of turns over in life because you go to school and you learn, okay, to be successful, I have to be disciplined in doing my homework and different things. So it just kind of ties over right over to uh, your way of life. We're going to talk about mentoring up next. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <clears throat> From high school to college to pro, Art of Football's mentoring offers a smooth football transition. Players and NFL mentors build a relationship through communication and workout sessions. The mentors give personal time to help players deal with any unforeseen experiences that they themselves have already been through. Art of Football's mentoring program success is demonstrated with the 2009 number two draft pick St. Louis Rams, Jason Smith. Welcome back to the Jessica Rector Show. So guys, tell me a little bit about the mentoring program. Uh, I'll start it off. You know, the mentoring program is a, we have a Touchdown for Life uh, program that involves academic help as far as um, kids that are struggling in school. Uh, a lot of athletes are in the position to get scholarships, but they lack the uh, SAT scores, passing their tax, and just knowing the ins and outs of what it takes to get your scholarship. I mean, you, there's a lot of different things. So our academic program uh, helps them out with that. And then we have a financial education, which we're teaching kids just basic money. We're not teaching them calculus and different things, but just, you know, how to budget your money, how to balance a, a checkbook, and just simple things in life to be successful. Uh, we also have the actual mentor, which is the player to player program. And that is something that Jason Smith took part of um, two years ago where who is the 2009 number two draft pick? correct correct so two years prior he had just started playing offensive tackle mm -hmm. and um, he came to me for help learn how to play the position but at the same time learning how to be a man in college and at the same time how to uh, transfer that over into being a professional mm -hmm. um, football is no different than being a doctor or anything else you have to educate yourself and you have to know how to handle yourself so you can be a professional. And uh, being a professional athlete is something that's not easy to, to accomplish. So through our mentor program, which involves those things, we're able to guide young athletes to the next level. Okay, stay tuned. You'll want to see what's coming up next. We're going to do a little football demonstration for those of you who don't know how to throw or catch a football. So stay tuned. <laughs> back it seems the role of playing sports is usually left to the male in the family but we want women to feel comfortable playing sports as well so we're actually going to do a football 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 whatever however you want to call it
football demonstration to show how easy it is to throw and catch a football. Do you want to demonstrate first for us? Okay, well, I'm going to demonstrate first. Okay, so you can throw it back to Morris. <laughs> can I talk you to can throw it back to him, and then you can you know, show us how to hold it. All right, first you need to put your, my hand's a little bigger, but you need to put your. Yes, I would say yeah. so. At least get a couple of fingers on the laces. So, okay. There you go. Spread it out right there. Okay. You got it? Uh huh. Oh, uh, yeah. My, you might, there you go. So, why can't I put it in the middle? Because that's. that's <laughs> that's just not, that's just not going to work. It yeah, feels you more gotta, comfortable, though. No? Okay. We'll do it your way and see right. the success. <laughs> I trust that you know what you're doing. A little bit. Okay. Okay. So, two fingers on it. Yeah, does my elbow need it? Does yeah, my elbow? elbow? Yeah, get the elbow up. Come. Ow? Yeah, come over your ear. Okay, come yeah, over I, my I know ear. I, my demonstration Are you ready? ready? I'm ready. <laughs> step, step like opposite of the hand you're throwing, right? Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, just like that. Okay, it, it's like second nature to you, second. but to someone who like doesn't You're right, I'm often. so sorry. It's fine. Okay. Opposite leg. Okay, opposite leg. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> It. Now when you catch it, you need to get your, really your thumb together. You want to try to catch it with your hands. Basically, you got to see the ball, so you're really catching with your eyes and your hands. You got it? Because if you don't see it, you would not catch it, okay? Keep so am it. I supposed to just see him and the ball through this? Yeah, well you, I mean, it's what if natural. it misses and hits me in the face? Well, that, that's your fault. <laughs> okay, are you ready? You ready? Well, I'm... Um, you you might want to just, you can relax. Okay. I like to teach you, relax. And then, and then come up like that. You ready? There we go. You ready? There okay, you go. go. Oh. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay, I got this. I got this. That's nice. Okay, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now we all should be able to throw and catch a football. So ladies, get out there and show them your skills. For more information about Art of Football, please go to artoffootballinc.com. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to take a few audience questions. <laughs>back to the Jessica Rector show. We're going to take a couple audience questions, gentlemen. The first one is from Donna. Where's Donna? Okay. I would like to know what is the number one thing that you would tell someone uh, new going into pros what to do or not to do? Um, well, one of the things I do tell my guys is first uh, realize it's a job. It's no longer a game. It's your profession now. So you have to treat it like that. Um, coaches expect you to be there on time. Um, you're expected to give 100% every time you're on the field. And if you don't, you'll get fined for it. For instance, uh, you come late to a meeting, that's $1,500. Uh, you learn real fast <laughs> that <laughs> this is serious. If you fall asleep in a meeting, that's $1,000. Um, every mistake you make in the NFL, because we're making such a high amount of money, you'll, you're responsible. And they, they hold you accountable for everything. And, as players, we hold each other accountable. Um, as our unit, offensive line, um, if you make mistakes in the game, we charge ourselves. So um, being disciplined and, and responsibility is the number one thing that I tell guys. You gotta learn that real quick because the NFL means not for long. And they'll only give you a few chances and they'll go with the next guy because you gotta think, there's only 53 guys on the team, is that what it is? So, and you got hundreds of thousands of guys around the world who want to play the sport. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the best, you know, when you get to that position, you're the best at that time. But there's other people that can do what you do. So you have to take advantage of your opportunity when it's there. And what do you say to kids, Morris, who want to actually do that, be in the NFL? Well, what I say to kids, I mean, I try to keep it real. And that's pretty much what we're about because, like, teaching them how to get to the next level because there's a lot of behind the scene things just like y'all got going on here that kids don't realize mm -hmm. that they're gonna be faced with. You know, It's not all about the glamour and this and that because it's a lot of adversities you go through and that's another thing that you know how to learn to bounce back from, from a lot of adversity right. because, uh, but I try to tell them to keep focused, stay focused and 
and, and, and get the little things out of it. Make sure you get something solid to stand on. Last question, Leslie, what's your question? I want to know uh, who, thank you, who was your mentor and what do you feel that they did for you that attributed to your success? Well, my mentor was my father and my pastor. Um, I kind of followed, my dad was very disciplined, so it was almost like I lived in the military, like a brat, but um, he directed me through life and made me be accountable for everything that I've done. Um, and my pastor kind of second, you know, when I had those questions, um, I'm very, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, so I, that I believe is what made me successful. So using my pastor's wisdom and spirit and my father's discipline is what, you know, really mentored me to where I'm at today. We have a little surprise for some audience members out there. I'm going to have each gentleman pick two numbers between 1 and 36. Kelvin, we'll start with you. 3 and 11. 3 and 11. Who has number 3 and who has number 11? 3 and 11. Here are some footballs that are signed by about 10 players. Morris, what are your two numbers? Eight and 29. Eight. Eight and 29. 29. Both my sons. And eight. Congratulations. My numbers are too high. I guess I could have went with six and one. 61. Five and uh, 13. <laughs> Five and 13. Nice. Uh, got her. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she wants some action. 13. Congratulations, everyone. For what's ahead on the next Just Corrector show, go to www justcorrector.com. Thank you gentlemen for joining me today. I appreciate it. And again, for more information about the art of football, go to artoffootballinc.com. Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.